Hi guys and welcome to Six Pack Classrooms educational videos on behalf of Plus Fitness. Today we're going to be talking about the squat. Now today we're going to be going through some really advanced biomechanics. So I don't want you to be thinking to yourself, oh I know how to squat. I want you to be thinking about maybe this will give me a great opportunity to learn something. So today we're going to be focusing on all our foundations, we're going to be teaching you tricks and we're going to be teaching you how to make the squat challenging with just your body weight. What you want to be doing is having the weight on your heels, having your toes up and aligning your body to transfer the weight and the compression vertically, taking the shearing force from your knee to a compression force, allowing your muscles to contract more efficiently but most importantly take the weight off your knee joint and be able to do it safely. So transferring your weight to your heels will transfer weight off your calves, off the tendons in your knees and transfer the weight to your quads and glutes where you want the weight to be. So the very first important thing is to focus on your foundation and transfer the weight all the way to your heels. So that's the most important thing. Once you've got the weight on your heels, now we can have a look at the rest of the body. We have to make sure that our posture is correct. So chest up and your back squeezed together. So I don't want you doing squats with your hands going forward. That's just transferring weight off your quads and your glutes to your back, creating bad posture. So training and exercise can either make your body worse or it can make it better. Today we are learning how to make it better. Using the COVID-19 virus, we get to stay at home and focus on our foundations and let's get this right so we can get the best out of our exercise at home and be safe. So, chest up, back squeeze together. Now the funny thing is, with that, you don't think about it when you're doing a squat, but when you're actually doing a squat, you have your back squeeze together because you're holding the bar. But when we're doing a body weight exercise, somehow, for some reason, everybody's hands come out in front. Don't put your hands in front, don't make it easier for yourself, we're here to challenge ourselves. So let's put in some effort, get the posture right, and be a little Tyrannosaurus Rex, you know. Let's get our hands tucked in nice and close, squeeze your back together. So this is a really big thing. Your back squeeze together. Now we can have a look at the other things. Feet, toes, knees. We used to teach people to have our feet shoulder width apart. We actually don't do that anymore. So the rules with your feet placement go like this. The further you have your feet apart, the more your glutes get activated. The more you bring your feet together, the more weight transfers off your glutes and goes to your quads. By all means, your quads and glutes will always be contracting as your primary muscles here, but where you place your feet will determine which one takes more of a load. The squat is or should be a glute dominant exercise. It should be your primary mover. So therefore, don't have your feet shoulder width apart. Let's have your feet a little wider. So not much wider, but just a little. Toes. Your toe placement needs to be out just a little bit. For the reason being is that your legs are now gonna come down to an angle and we need to realign your knees and your toes to compensate for your wide feet. So, pick your feet placement. If you are wanting to focus more on your glutes, let's take a slightly wider stance. If you wanna focus more on your thighs, let's bring your feet together. But either way, have your toes out just very subtly. I'm talking five, 10 degrees here. If you try and rotate your foot, your foot goes with you. So what we want to be doing is making sure that wherever our toes are going, that's the same direction that our knees are going. So we want to make sure that our knees are heading in the same direction of your toes. So when you do a squat, have a quick look down every couple reps and make sure that your toes are either sitting directly over your, sorry, making sure your knees are sitting directly over your toes or just slightly on the outside of your foot. 
So these are really, really important. So here we're going to just think about your alignment of your feet, your toes, and your knees. Now, a lot of people can do this section very well and still do a lot of repetitions. So what we now need to be thinking about is how do we make this more difficult? It comes with two predominant different tricks, apart from having good technique and good posture and having a good range of motion. The two big things is timing and adding a pause on the bottom. So we have what we call a contraction of a concentric phase and an eccentric phase. A concentric phase is when your muscles are contracting, in this case, when you're going up. An eccentric phase is where your muscles are lengthening or your primary muscle is lengthening and that's called the eccentric phase which is on the way down. To get the best results, I strongly suggest doing a four second rep or a five second rep. Either way, the concentric force only takes one second. The downward movement where your muscles are lengthening is where you're doing your damage. That is where the muscles are tearing because it's trying to lengthen under load. So on the downward movement, we want to be going very slowly and in control. So we want to be going down slowly with your chest up, shoulders back, feet slightly wider than shoulder width apart, toes out, weight on your heels, knees on your toes or outside your toes, and going down with the weight on your heel very, very slowly. Now a really good trick is to actually pull out your clock from your house or do it and use the clock in your lounge room. Do your squat in front of a clock where you can see it. Take out your clock and put it in the garage. Go buy a clock and take it into the garage. But what you can do is do the timing with it in front of you. Your sets should be no more than 40 seconds per set. I'm sick and tired of seeing guys even in the gym lifting up a really heavy weight and then only doing 10 seconds worth of work by doing two, three reps. Time under tension is vital. All the original research was done with time under tension with five second reps, one second up, four seconds down. So what we've really got to focus on is time under tension. 40 seconds, which is eight reps, to 60 seconds, which is 12 reps. That is your load and that's your range. Don't just do uh, 15 uh, squats in 15 seconds. You will get nowhere by doing that sort of work. So the pause on the bottom now comes into play. So we can do those four second reps and add a pause for a second. One, two, three, pause, drive. One, two, three, pause, drive. So we can do that as a five second rep if you like. If you want to do a four second rep, you can go one, two, pause, drive. One, two, pause, drive. So there are our different options that we can do. But putting a pause on the bottom will make sure that you take more time under tension and you focus on tearing and causing damage to your muscles, which we want to do when you're down in the bottom of the squat and, it, and it's the heaviest. So this is where we're going to get the best workout when doing body weight squats is having that pause on the bottom. Breathing. Now we need to breathe and we always forget about this, but the main reason we breathe isn't just to get oxygen in, but it is simply to make sure that our core is contracted where we want it the most. So traditionally we should take a breath in as we go down and breathe out on the way up. So that's how we used to do it. But now we realize that we want to have your core contracted in the bottom when you need it the most. So we don't longer breathe in on the way down and out on the way up. We do it halfway. And this is where advanced breathing for my top clients really come into play. Your breathing will be going in, out when you're halfway down for the bottom half. Breathe in for the top half. Therefore, your core is contracted on the bottom half of the squat when you want it the most. Your
Your veins carry blood and then break out into tiny little capillaries that feed your muscles oxygen. Your capillaries are tiny. So when your muscles are using oxygen, the oxygen, those little capillaries, get used really fast. The lack of oxygen creates a byproduct called hydrogen, and your hydrogen is what's burning. So what's happening is, you're using oxygen, it's creating hydrogen, the hydrogen is burning, your body now is producing lactic acid to flush out the hydrogen, but it's the hydrogen that's burning. So the more we breathe, the less hydrogen is going to be created, and the more oxygen is going to be in there, and the less hydrogen needs to be created because you've got plenty of oxygen in your muscles, and the less it's going to burn. So make sure that you breathe, 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 and the timing is what's going to contract your internal core and keep you safe when your body's under load on the bottom half. The last thing we're going to be talking about is glute contraction. Now, a lot of people have uh, glutes that are inactive. Um, so a really good trick is that when you're on the bottom and you have paused, now is a great opportunity to squeeze your glutes and drive up. So having your glutes pre-contracted is your brain sending the message to your nerves telling that muscle to contract. We can't just do it and expect your brain to do everything for you. You know, if you just go straight down and straight up, then whatever is currently, whatever is your current foundation, which is which muscles you've been using the most in your life. They're the ones that's gonna contract the most. And if you've never actually thought about contracting your glutes in a, in a squat, don't expect them to work because you haven't trained your body to do so. So glute contraction on the bottom is absolutely vital. Go down, keep your feet wide to activate them, keep your knees apart to activate them, keep the weight on your heels to activate them, chest up, squeeze your shoulders back in good posture and position, and then when you're on the bottom and you're pausing, squeeze your butt, squeeze those glutes, and then drive up with your weight on your heel, and you will feel your muscles contracting. So guys, this is what I suggest you do. For your first two or three sessions, uh, just focus on the top two. Then for your next two sessions, focus on the next two. Then for the next two sessions, focus on the bottom. Your goal is by six training sessions that you will do over two weeks. That two weeks, you're gonna get the squat down absolutely perfect. So what I suggest you do with this exercises is have a look at my videos where I'm looking at programming. I'm gonna add that into the link right now. Click on that and then we're gonna be talking about how we're gonna add this into your program and into your weekly program.